It's easy to think that size is a really important factor when it comes to competition between mates and humans, but really in the natural world it's definitely more the case, whether it's the beautiful plumage feathers of a male peacock or the huge antlers of a red deer stag. Size is really important and increases your chances of passing on your genes to the next generation. And actually, there's some good, solid theory behind this, and the person who came up with the whole idea was not only the greatest evolutionary biologist of all time, Sir Charles Darwin. He came up with the idea of sexual selection in 1871, which are traits which didn't necessarily improve survival, but instead improved reproduction. And he realised there was this trade-off between survival and reproduction, where some traits increased the chances of survival, but reduced the chances of reproduction, and vice versa. Now evolution has come up with some pretty wacky ways of ensuring a mate, whether that be huge antlers to fight with rival males, beautiful plumage patterns, or um, this. But what I want to talk about today is something even more extreme and perhaps shocking than that. Now you, when you look at a reed bed and you look through your binoculars you think, ah, oh, aren't the ducks beautiful? You know, they're living really beautiful lives, they're so peaceful, you know, there's nothing, you know, really that violent or anything like that going on here at all. Well, you're wrong, because the duck, when it comes to its sex life, is the most violent species of bird um, probably ever. So to increase the chances of a mate, male ducks will force copulations on females to a point where the female basically has no choice whether to mate or not. So in anthropomorphic terms we could call this rape, but in evolutionary terms it's very, very interesting because it means that there's an arms race going on between male and female ducks. The male duck penis is very, very impressive indeed. It's a long corkscrew shape. And you might wonder, why is that? Why does it have to be such a weird shape? Well, you know, a key has to fit into a lock, doesn't it? So it, the reason being is that the duck's vagina is an incredibly weird shape as well. So over evolutionary time, the female duck's vagina has evolved to become more of a challenge for the male's penis to fit into. Now in the study in question, they used two species of duck, which you actually wouldn't find here at the reserve. The lesser scorp, and the ruddy duck. The results from that study generalizes. So we can really show what strong selection pressures, what strong sexual selection pressures there are on male ducks when it comes to their penis morphology. Now, what the scientists found out is that these ducks had evolved to become plastic. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that they've evolved to change their behavior depending on the current mating situation. And that was slightly different for the two different ducks. So in the lesser score, what they did, they paired male and females up and kept them alone. But what they also did is that they kept ducks where there were loads of males. So there was male-male competition. And what they found out is, is when there was male-male competition, the ducks grew larger penises to aid in that competition between the males. Now, actually, when it comes to penises in ducks, well, they're pretty impressive, but anything, as I said before, comes with a cost. So there's always trade-offs in nature. So to grow such a big penis requires a lot of energy. So actually what the ducks do is that they actually regrow their penis every year so they don't have to, you know, go through the trouble of maintaining it when it's not the breeding season. So that's what happened in the lesser score. Now the ruddy duck, when it comes to the duck's penis, really is the king. Its penis is larger than the length of its body, believe it or not. So basically what the scientists think is that it really can't get any bigger, <laughs> okay? So in that situation, they repeated the same experiment that they did with the lesser score. They kept some ducks where it was just one male and one female, and then some ducks where there were loads of males. And what they found was, the large males grew large penises and the small males didn't grow anything at all in their first year. They had little, 
called maggots, <laughs> okay? Barely anything at all. So clearly this is the trade-off in action then, because it was too costly to grow that penis when there's lots of male-male competition because they, they, they just know they're going to lose, quite frankly. They're going to get beaten up in a fight, so it's more trouble than it's worth. In the second year, they've got a second chance at breeding now. What happens then? Well, then, the smaller ducks do grow a penis, but not for very long at all, really. So they grow for about five weeks, whilst the larger ducks can have that penis for about three months. So there's still a very, you know, intricate balancing act into whether to have a penis and try to mate or not. And that really summarises really well, really, I think, the trade-offs in nature, the benefits and the costs. Mating strategies have evolved to, you know, minimise the costs as much as they can to increase survival and also to increase mating success, which there you go, never take the male mallard duck or any duck really for granted again. They're superb at what they're doing and over evolutionary time, nature has made them do loads of weird and wacky things when it comes to their sex life. Oh, hello, <laughs> didn't see you there. Did you enjoy the video? Good, well if you did, you know what to do then, don't you? Subscribe! <laughs> what you need to do is press that button there. Just there. And if you want to see another video, just go over there. The world's your oyster.